Right, this is uh, how I take the rear wheel out. Um, I'll take the uh, rear disc off, um, but I'll have to, or sorry, the rear caliper off. I'll take the rear caliper off, and first of all, I'll have to compress the pistons to retract the pads. Uh, so how I do this is I push it with my foot whilst on the centre stand. So I put my foot on and press and that compresses the pistons fully retracted. Then what I've done, I've put a little grommet into the rubber, into the plastic uh, cowling and then put my T-spanner through the hole onto the nut, onto the bolt. And we say, undo it, unwind, and so we're out. And hopefully, all being well, it's a little bit tight, uh, that's out. Again, with the rear one, undo the bolt. Take it out. Um, what I can do just to protect everything a wee bit. Put a bit of plastic bag on there. And the caliper can be a wee bit fiddly, but she does. If you find the right setting on the spoke, just pop straight out. I think it could be that one, I'm not sure. Yep, there we are. That's popped out. Um, so that gives me free access. As you can see, to the that plastic, that gives me access to where uh, I'm going to be working when I take the wheel off. Now for the rear wheel, um, there's a torque wrench with the leverage, bikes in gear, grab one of the spokes, crack the nuts off, one by one. Like so, so we're all loose, like that, but I don't like unwinding them all the way, quite lazy, so what I'll do, just use the windy gun, so, so, I always put everything in a in a little tray so everything in one place when you can put it back on that's so now straight out of the way and the rear wheel and then off simple right now I'm we'll attempt to take the disc off um we'll give it a quick little bit of a white round uh, I've never had this one off before, um, I'm using an impact driver into the hex, I hope, yep there we go, on the one hopefully, yep, yep, yep we're moving, that's it. It's a wee bit stiff for some reason. It's the new it's the newness of the five-year-old girl. But we are slowly undoing. Yeah. As you can see it is loose. Hopefully you can see with me elbow in the way. Well, there you go. That's off. The disc is off. And yeah, and there we have the disc in hand. I put the little screw back into me the container, so all the big, all the little parts are in one place. So now I have access to where everything's going to be mounted. I'll just give it a little service spray just to clean it, clean it off because there is 
years of build up of brake dust even though you you clean the bike and I'm not the world's best at cleaning keeping the bike clean because I use them all year round even in the snow uh, I'll just pause the video while I just clean a bit more and that'll be boring for you yeah so clean it give it a wipe down need some brake cleaner give it a little bit of spray brake cleaner lovely stuff um, we'll put a bit of a oil absorbent pad on your floor and how I do I'll give it a bit of air duster off that's it keeps things a bit, a bit clean for when you're working so there we are what's that bit ready all right next up so what we're using yeah what i'm using is a 12 mil long reach socket um, just to crack these two 12 mil bolts off so bang it on bang coming off whether these been off well they should have been off for the recall of the drive shaft i would have thought i'm not, I'm not sure um, onto the one bang it winding it off um, what I can do is grab my air gun and bang it on and just bang it off like so and obviously these these two are going to be surplus to requirement because um, it comes with two new ones um, from Italy so I'll just put these in a bag to keep them clean and safe from one until I come to use them again possibly and um, get the other ones ready so put the new bolts um, I will be replacing these for some titanium ones with seizing wire at a later date but these will fit into the nice clean buckets but you must uh, put some thread lock you can either use the liquid thread lock or you can use the lipstick thread lock um, they're all thread lock it's all brilliant stuff um, swipe it down the threads like so wipe it down like the threads like so dead easy I much prefer the uh, the lipstick type um, I just make sure it's on all the threads where it's going to be nipping up and then on the threads where it's all going to be lipping up and they are also supplied with a washer and a spring washer just to make sure it's extra secure so what I do is I'm going to give it a spray PTFE tape onto the metal bit that's going to be touching I don't know why I do that I just prefer to do it so put that onto there uh, as I say, I've never done this before before um, give them a different size socket we're on my 13 mil now there you go we're on my 13 mil socket it says there's the 12 back onto my rack maybe we should be a 13 mil yeah 13 mil and i'll just gently manually wind this one in like so that's straight forward there mate it does come with instructions for torque wrenches torque wrench settings 
but I'll just do it rack of the ice twist to the gob. Um, like I say, I will be putting these for race spec bolt titanium, um, and they have the season wire on. I much prefer them on a personal thing. So yeah, that, that's that bit mounted on. Just one second, I'll put you on hold. Right now, I'm going to put the uh, the bracket on for the support of the uh, the splash guard. Um, again, there is need for Loctite. Um, so these little cap screws, give it a white, a wipe of the thread lock. Um, well, like I say, again, I will be changing these for titanium. Um, Eventually, because uh, I'm very much an adversary of uh, seizing wire on things. Um, make sure the threads are covered. Like so. Like so. Like so. So these are all on uh, cap screws. Um, position it. Like so. so that's the centre one in, the lower one, and the upper one, and the down key, just so centre one's home, supporting it all, just wind them all in nice and gently. So, right, so, so they're all just gently tight, and I'm just going to knit them up now. Jobs are good, then. There we go, that's the uh, brackety mounted, and hopefully, in theory, we should be ready for. The slosh guard, moustache, or whatever you would like to call it. Um, but yeah, it's a substantial bracket. Job's a good one. Um, yeah, right, I'll put you in hold again. Now for the fitting of the uh, carbon fibre guard. Um, three M5 dome head Allen screws. Um, again, using the lock tight onto the threads, um, and again, I will be replacing, like I keep saying, with uh, titanium race spec M5 bolts, and make sure it's coated on the threads. Yeah. Thread lock is a must. Um, again, it uh, reduces the chance of vibration vibrating them out. So that's exactly the same. Can't get it on the wrong way around. Famous last words. It just sort of keeps on. It's a lovely fit. There we go. And. Excuse my head. Should be a little bit awkward working with gloves. Bear with me. So that's one on. Let's wind it in. So, the other ones, I'll put onto the end of the other key, hold it with my wee finger. And screw that one in. Like yeah, people are on about the advantages of and disadvantages of having a, a centre stand. I so swear by them, they are so, so handy for 
basically maintenance like this it's yeah they're absolutely bob on um i've done my suspension bushes middle of last year um without a center stand that would have been impossible um and the last one oh with the washers on Like so, and again, in, and just a gentle nip, gentle nip, and a gentle nip. Just check them one, two, three. So there we are, that's that wee bit fitted and for the next bit hopefully the tyre will fit between the hugger, not the hugger, the splash guard and the exhaust. Um, I've got a Leo Vince exhaust, uh, the standard exhaust cans are a lot wider and fatter and they have a gasket on. Um, if you break the gasket you've got to get a new gasket. Um, so mine hasn't got a gasket, they're a great pipe I think, the Leo Vince, I've got no baffles in it whatsoever, makes a lovely little rumble, and so yeah, I shall be now trying to fit the tyre, the wheel. Um, on the wheel nuts, I use pure nickel, never sees, bit of grease, um, it stops any corrosion, uh, in dissimilar metals and it's just a a good thing it's uh, quite expensive is this nickel seal seal um, but I swear by using it on various parts on and around the bike once you've had a nut off um, that does come on and off quite regular this does help um, just like that and what I'll do this bit here um, on the drive, it got a bit of rust on it, and etc. etc. What I'll do, I'll give it a wipe with grease um, just before putting the wheel on. So I'll just stop, give it a wipe with grease, and that will just hopefully stop any corrosion in there. Right, I've put a bit of grease around the inside where the disc mounts, and just a smidgen around the flange of the drive. Um, you can't really get this on wrong, or you shouldn't be able to, because you've got to get the screw hole and the disc into the dowel, which is there. So on the disc, you've got the countersink for the screw hole and one for the dowel. So it, it's hopefully you can't get it wrong. So you, you could put the stud lines in. And I don't know, you can't, you can't, there you go, it bobs on, so you can't really get it wrong. All right, so I'm just showing you here. So once the stud holes actually line up, it goes bang straight on. Um, he says, you can get it on wrong. Because you've got your stud hole. Yeah, so you've got to make sure your dowel is next to your countersunk so it actually sits home smoothly. Um, again, this comes with uh, the uh, disc securing. Uh, this is an Allen key type. I'm assuming this is stainless steel. I haven't actually checked it with a magnet, so I'm assuming it's stainless steel. For this one, I'm not going to use Loctite. Again, it's my own personal preference because um, this actually doesn't do a great deal. And I wish I'll just put some of my lovely, lovely nickel silver grease on. Um, with a swimming halter. With a swimming halter. 
There's a hole. There we are. So that should just go in there. And we've got the right drive on key. And that should just screw in nice and easy into there. And a nice nip on there. So there you go. That is the brake disc, or brake disc, brake rotor, as people call them, um, back on. So now, see if I can get the wheel in without snapping the moustache off, the splash guard, or if I need to take the exhaust off. So I'll just put it on hold. Right, I'm now going to try and fit the uh, rear wheel back on. Um, no, it won't go in the normal way um, without taking the exhaust off. So I'm just going to try another way. Excuse the grunting, I'm an old man with bad knees. <laughs> so if I hopefully lower the wheel down, so I'm not hitting the camera. Um, yeah, she will. She will go in. Not the best way, but at least. And then I have to undo the exhaust. And that's that wheel in. So I need to now jump over the wheel nuts. Drop one on the floor. And it's always, like I say, worth having a, a little tray to put all your wheel nuts and nuts and bolts in. A little tote tray, people will call them. And just start the wheel nut. Go well on. Um, again, I'm a bit, a bit lazy. Where's me? Where's me? Where's that gone? Uh, yeah. Put the air going on forward. Bang it up. Where's it up? Where's it up? Where's it up? Where's it up? Good there. there we go. Three. What I'll do is I'll nip it up. I'll just put it in gear. This makes life a bit easier. You just put it in gear. There we go. It's in gear. Ah. Start wrench. It's going if I had preset it. Um, so that's that rear wheel on. So then gear. Let's take it out of gear now. The long wrench, there you go. That's the rear wheel on. Smash guard fitted, which looks lovely. Now I'll have to fit the uh, the rear brake caliper again. Now I'll put you on hold while I move everything over. So now so now I'm going to fit the, uh, the brake caliper. Um, the idea is while you've got the brake caliper off, you can look at the brake pads. Mine have got a couple of hundred miles or so left on them, um, and I'll do another video if you wish um, of how I strip down a brake caliper. I'll take the pistons out, use the red grease, etc., etc., and give them a right good service, um, and just make sure everything's free for winter. So, there you go, everything's fully open. So hopefully, this, with a bit of fiddling again, finding the right gap in the smoke just falls in like so. 
Um, okay. The uh, the bolts that I use on and off. I give them a copper. Uh, sorry, a pure nickel seal. You can see that. I'm trying to get it in the camera. You can see it all. Nickel seal, which I swear by. It's a great, brilliant item. So look at that one. Let's go the camera. Get my T-bar. Just gently wind that in. Like so. So that's one in. Um, and so the way I've done it is bore a hole into the plastic thing here. Saves me taking the, the whole thing on and off. Um, because these bolts, if they aren't taken out regularly, uh, do seize. And when I got it brand new, whoever fitted the hugger had stripped the thread and glued it in, which is bad. So I've had to drill that. Um, put a helicoil in and sort that one out but hopefully with this through the hole he says I probably could have done with the hole a wee bit bigger um, because I can't get my socket in now this is going to be disastrous maybe I'm going possibly going to start here yeah, we're in so yeah we started Wind it in, wind it in, wind it in. So jobs are good and give it a gentle lip. Jobs are good and like so. And this one a nip. Good look at this one. And Put my little rubber grommet in. I mean, it's just a talking gesture. Little grommet in, just finishes it off like so. What you must do is use your back brake and put your pistons back out. Otherwise, you'll get a big foot of nothing. Um, so I'll just go out to the other side and put the rear brake up. Oh. Yeah, got a big brake pedal there. Job's a good one. So there we have a lovely little splash guard fitted from a lovely gentleman from Italy. Um, like I said, it's lovely engineered. Um, let's give it a wipe off with a bit of service spray. Again, you've got to be careful when you set off. You've got to bed your brakes back in in case you've got any oils or anything like that on the disc. Um, it won't take long to do. Well, there you have it. Job done. Things can be done. Yeah, I'm happy. Right, thank you very much. And here we have. Um, the carbon splash guard, moustache hugger, people call it a BMW, wash your mouths out. BMW have got some things right, and these type of things are, yeah, right. Um, come on Honda, carry on making these bikes, I know you say you're not, but they are an awesome, awesome bit of kit. Um, but yeah, with the Givy luggage, first aid kit in here, which I've developed. It's just first aid kit I've put in, that's what I use that little box for, which is brilliant. Leo Vince exhaust. Um, what we're going here, which I do find handy, is the uh, tyre pressure. Um, is absolutely brilliant and essential. Um, I, I find it absolutely awesome, because going across Europe, my tyre pressures are getting up to nearly 60 psi in the temperatures, in the, in the hot air, so you can drop them down. They're a bit low at the moment because we are cold in England. Um, but yeah, that's very good. Um, my mount for my Tom Tom. Um, I've just used, if you can see it, a handlebar mount upside down. Absolutely solid, secure as anything. Um, I've got various GoPro mounts on board. Um, <laughs> just finding them. Uh, 
Yeah, as you see it, GoPro mount here, spun off a bit of aluminium into a fairing bolt, no drilling. 12 volt cigarette lighter socket for uh, pulling power off and have it on a constant supply to the GoPro or a USB port, um, which again is hardwired into the bike and is there. Um, just flip the lid down. Try to get a bit of light on the job for you. Um, if that's helping. Yeah, USB port that just swivels around. Beautiful job. Perfect for gear for just charging your telephone into a little uh, pouch on the side of the frame. Yeah, there's all sorts of little bits I've done on and around the bike. Uh, too many to mention. Thank you very much for watching.